Hey guys, Aramis555 here. Just coming to you guys with a uh, deck profile today. Uh, this one is going to be uh, none other than Car Curries. Yeah, pure Car Curries. Um, I was trying to get Sabres to work. Uh, I, th I think they're fine. I think they're about as good as they're going to get. Um, but, uh, got a rare Elf Alpha there going on. Um, but I just kind of realized I was like, the pure Car Curry version is just so strong. Like, if I go first, it can still go off really easily with, with just five cards in hand. Um, now if I go second, it really doesn't have too hard of a time playing around back rows, uh, if you know how to play your hand right. Um, so I think the deck's really, really solid right now. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I've always really liked this deck. It's, it's one of those rare decks that's just super OP. It's just never been hit. And, um, I'm not really sure why. I guess because it loses to quite a few side deck cards, but a lot of people aren't side decking cards that kill this right now. So, um, I kind of felt this was a strong contender for the format, and, uh, I just wanted to show you guys, um, what I'm playing. Uh, I was going to do a different format, I was going to try doing like a thing because I got my new, uh, I got a new phone. Um, I was going to try uh, shooting um, down a play mat like I usually used to do, but I figured like this was the best way to do it still. Um, I tried doing the other way and it's just still too shaky. It's, it's better if I have somebody holding the, the camera for me. Um, so I'll try and do a couple more of those in the future. I know B-Man uh, wanted to um, do some deck profiles uh, tomorrow night, so um, possibly we can do a couple then with him. And... Uh, upload those onto my channel just because he's got so many decks just gives stuff for you guys to watch so um anyways to get things started here i'm gonna start off with the monsters uh i will explain everything because i have not done a deck profile for this deck and uh it's been quite a while i think since earlier this year so um gotta run three searcher guy uh in Asichi. um i'm not gonna pronounce all their names out either <laughs> that's way too much work um he's awesome like if you open if you open kind of a a slower hand, you open this guy, you can always just summon him, he adds your combo pieces to your hand, you can just go off next turn. Uh, he's really good as well because he searches out Anatomy, which is one of my favorite cards in the deck. It's really strong, this format. Um, a lot of people are cutting out MSTs in their main deck, so uh, it makes it even better. And um, he's just a really good card. He helps you make Naturia Beast, he helps you make Catastro, which is going to help you Synchro Climb. Um, and it's just overall, just I think you need to run three of them. I've seen some, seen some people running two, I think two's fine as well, but I like opening with them. Um, just because he's like my Stratos the deck. Like I think I feel like every deck right now that doesn't have a Stratos uh, type monster is really suffering. So uh, next up is three uh, Nanishi. She is awesome. Um, basically, what she does is you uh, normal summon her, um, and then you can activate her effect uh, to get an extra normal summon that turn. Uh, unlike Pollux or um, what the frick is his name. The other guy. Someone's gonna comment down below. I don't even know the the evil swarm version. Uh, Caster, Caster. I got it. Um, other than uh, she has a different ruling than them. So if you normal summon them, uh, you still get the extra normal summon per turn. Per turn. It's because her uh, wording is different. Um, so if you normal summon her and a scrub uh, will make the mistake of like Phoenix chain her. Um, people do it sometimes. Breakthrough and skilling her when you activate her effect. Um, you can actually just like synchro uh, up and then special another one from your deck and then use that one's effect instead. So it's actually really strong. Uh, she gets all your synchro climb plays going and uh, I think she's actually one of the, I would say she's probably the best one of the deck. <clears throat> uh, I'm running two um, Nisamu. He is the battle searcher. Uh, I don't think you need three. I think three is a bit too much. Um, I was originally trying out the level five guy, but I just noticed when you draw him, like he's terrible. He literally just bricks in your hand, and I don't like cards like that. Like I want to make this deck as consistent as possible. Um, too quick, quick is awesome. Um, he gets over. Uh, he makes battle searchers um, such as uh, Lind mistiming. If they summon, say Pike, uh, Pike cannot activate his effect because the last thing to happen is him special summoning a monster from the grave. Uh, he's also very important because he helps your synchro climbing um, once again. Uh, onto more tuners. Uh, there's lots of tuners in this deck. This deck just everything is a monster. It just all combos. Um, two Nishipachi. I think three is too many. I think two is perfect. Um, basically, what this guy does is when he special somebody changes the battle position of a monster in the field, so he can change himself. Um, generally, you're just going to grab him off of a Barreto at the end of like making three, two or three Barretos, and you just draw two or three cards. So it's pretty nasty. Um, he's also really good because uh, with Redox, he once gains level three tuner, and you can you can make Leo uh, pretty easy in this deck. Uh, and then I'm running one, instead of the three issue Pachi, I'm running one Watchdog. Uh, he's the only one, he's not as important in this version as he is the Geargia version. Um, I really feel like Geargia is still a very weak deck, um, especially the Karkuri version. I was just testing it and I just kept drawing these like terrible hands, especially if you go first, because I don't like it, because basically what happens is you have to like 
every single game, unless you open like Birdman, Armor, and um, uh, Accelerator, you can't really go off. You have to like set armor, wait a turn, and uh, your opponent's gonna get to respond to that. And I just don't like that. Like I want to be able to, I want to be able to make a push turn one and say you need to play around me, not I'm gonna have to wait and play around you. Um, I also don't like how armor gets popped so easily. That really bugs me as well. Um, so I, I just feel like the Gear Gear version is really weak compared to this. Um, it is definitely more of a stun deck. I feel like the Gear Gear version, because you're running so many monsters and spells in this, uh, you have more room in the Gear Gear version to run um, traps uh, for protection, um, which is fine. Uh, you could run traps in this as well. I'll kind of get to my traps in a minute here, and I'll tell you guys uh, what's what. So um, two Solar Wind Jammers. Uh, this guy's better than Star or, uh, Cyber Dragon, um, mainly just for the fact that uh, you can special summon them without your opponent having a monster in the field. That is very, very important. It's very broken as well. Um, he's also great because he gets under bottomless, uh, and all your tuners actually get over under bottomless as well, your level 3 tuners. Um, so they actually won't be able to activate bottomless on your monster until a synchro summon. So even if you use two to special, uh, say Beretto or Beret or whatever, and they bottomless, um, you can still special summon uh, a Curry Curry monster from your deck and uh, keep going. Um, so that's really, really important. Um, so that's it for the car curries. Uh, next, or sorry for the, uh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> uh, two site commanders, um, not three, three clogs. Two is just the perfect number. Um, it does suck if you open with these uh, because then it means your emergency teleports late game are kind of dead. Um, but you don't need to. Like, you don't really want to open up with it. It's kind of weak by itself. Uh, it's a 1900 beater, basically. But the reason why you just want two is, is so you don't draw it. It's kind of just there when you need it. And the last monster is Redox because everything in here except for Solar Wind Jammer is a Earth monster. Excuse me. So um, basically, what ends up happening there is uh, it just gives you more spam. And Redox works really well because they're all Earths. So you can special summon them and make Leo or rank 7 if you're running it. So that's it for the monsters. Uh, 18 monsters. I'm not running any hand traps because I want. I feel now like hand traps are very good. But I worry that with playing them, you might play it, run into a deck where your hand traps will be dead. And uh, if I go first, I want the most consistency possible. I want to just be able to like, go ham. So um, so we have uh, three Emergency Teleport. Uh, this card is amazing. It's super good. I love the Psychic Engine. And um, I feel like this is definitely the best way to play the deck. Uh, I actually had a game against uh, Brennan the other night. He was really salty. I opened Emergency Teleport, Instant Fusion... Uh, no, sorry, it wasn't an institution. It was Emergency Teleport, uh, two Solar Wind Jammers, um, a Nanishi, and a level four. So he ends up having, he's playing Sylvans. He has a set monster. I knew it was Coma Shroomo, Coma Shroomo or however the heck you say that thing. Same, the Mushroom. Uh, a back row and um, the field spell. So I was like, okay, well, basically, that back row is just going to stop my one play. And if it doesn't, I'm going to win. So I literally just summoned Nanishi. I normal, extra normal summoned uh, Nisamu. And I synchro summoned for Black Rose. I nuked his whole board. He had nothing to stop it. His set back row was traps done. Um, and uh, I was able just to go into a Bredo play after that and uh, still win the game. So that, that was pretty insane. Um, Next up is, and that was because I had Emergency Teleport, and uh, I specialed the second Solar Wind Jammer, which was pretty funny. Um, so next up, we have the uh, three Instant Fusions. Uh, it's just another level five. I think you need to run three. Uh, two Iron Calls. Um, this is a poor man's version of uh, Soul Charge. I don't own Soul Charges. Otherwise, these would be two Soul Charge. Uh, you can even get away with running three in this deck, but I find three is really uh, cloggy. Um, I don't like opening two, I find just having one when you need it. This deck has so much draw power anyways, that if you if you do have soul charges, replace the two iron calls with two soul charges. Uh, I am running two desynchros. Originally this, I was only running one, but I just realized like this card's just so strong. Um, basically what it does is if you summon like a car Kree monster and they Phoenix Chain you, they break through skill you, uh, basically, or they Valor you, uh, you can just desynchro, put it back in the extra deck, and uh, you can just make it again, and then you get another. You get the special summon finally, so it's super good for that. Um, synchros are also becoming very popular again. Um, so this actually, uh, especially with the new um, Zing Wang or whatever the heck Zing Zang deck, whatever the heck they're called, uh, you can actually use this on your opponent's synchro monsters as well. So that's very very important. Um, so next up for the Karakuri spells, we're running two anatomy. 
uh, three clogs, I feel like one is fine. Like, you might say that the second one's overkill, but I just like opening with this. Like, it just gives me even more advantage turn one. It gives me a higher chance to draw in my trap cards and my stun cards, and uh, it just makes your combos just keep going, which is really, really important. Uh, one card carry cash cash. Um, that's just there for searching. It gets you out of, like, awkward situations where... Um, say you have, uh, your opponent has a big monster in the board and you have to do your normal summon with Inishichi to get a search. Uh, you can just search out that and then you can use that to switch him in defense so he doesn't have to crash. Because a lot of people do forget that the card career monsters have to battle. Um, you have to enter your battle phase if you, if you enter, uh, well you always have to enter your battle phase, but you can't, uh, you have to attack if, if you have an attack position card curry. So, um, I'm still running 3 MST. I think it's extra good in here just for the fact that, like, if somebody goes first now, and they have five cards. The chance of them like having an open hand where they set a monster and have four back row, it, it's not going to happen very often. It's usually going to be like uh, the average, if you do the math, is about one monster, two back rows. Uh, so if I'm in a really good spot and I open, uh, they open just one monster, one back row, I just MST and then, pff, I could just go off. So uh, I feel like that's really important. This deck also loses really hard to uh, Vanity's Emptiness. Um, Skill Drain really hurts as well, uh, and I feel like that card might be gaining some popularity again soon. And um, I, I also like it with the Mermail matchup too. So uh, The One Book of Moon, and that's it for the spells. I do not run Dark Hole. I do not side deck Dark Hole. Uh, I feel like you don't need it in this deck. Um, I feel like Dark Hole is more important when Thunder King was uh, more uh, relevant in the format, but since it's that one, it's really not. Um, two Royal Decrees. Uh, this is for Traps. Um, just two decree. I think I think that three is a bit too much unless you're running just three decree. But I feel like then if you're running three decree, that you should be running hand traps as well, like uh, two veilers or something. But I don't really feel veiler is that strong because once again, I don't want to open with it. So uh, just two decree is fine, and it gives you some stuff to side out if your opponent's not playing a back row heavy deck. I feel like three. If I'm running three decree and three MST, it's putting me in that awkward situation where. Um, if I go second and I draw a decree and it's on MST and they have one back row, that means I have to set a decree and wait before I can go off. So uh, I'd rather have it after I make a big board and I go first and I have it set and I just know I'm safe with a Nat Beast. And then I'm running your three staple spells, which is Compulse, Bondless, and Solemn Warning. Not Torrential, obviously, because it's pretty much just a pseudo Dark Hole. Um, so I'm the extra deck really quick here. I do have a couple Honorable Mention cards as well um, that I would like to find room for, but I really don't know what to cut. Um, because the deck is just so tight on space, and I use all these monsters so much. So, um, anyways, let's get things started. So for uh, XYZs, I just have one um, uh, Felgren. Uh, I was going to try and make room for Big Eye. I don't own Draco Sack. If I had Draco Sack, I would definitely make room for Draco Sack in here because with two berets, you can make a Rick Seven. Um, but I just found like he was sitting in my extra deck. I never made him. Like you just don't need him. So he's more of a control card than an OTK card. So I'm not really big like fond on that. Um, Felgrind's really nice if you can't get the OTK through, uh, or you go turn one, you can spam triple Burrito, and you can just end your board with like a Burrito and that Beast, and this, or a Burrito, um, a Leo, and this, stuff like that. Uh, it's just really, really insane. So, and you can do those plays like super consistently, it's ridiculous. Um, one Leo, I make this guy a lot, I think you need him, he's definitely staple. Uh, and then this is an absolute staple, you have to run three Burrito in the, in the pure version, just because like getting three of these guys out is just so clutch. Um, it's OTK potential, and uh, his draw effect is insane, so I think he's very important. Uh, for my other 8s, I do have Scrap Dragon. I actually haven't really made this guy yet, but I feel like he's really important um, just to get over something bigger, but I don't know. I might take him out. Um, we'll see. Uh, Stardust Dragon I do make quite often just because Dark Hole scares me, uh, so I don't really like that. This is also really good against the hat matchup as well. Um, so that's it against uh, for 8s. Um, the other one, the one I wanted to squeeze in was Crimson Blader, of course. He's really good against water. I'm not main decking him right now, but I'm really actually thinking about taking out Scrap Dragon. I have this in my side deck, but uh, comment down below what you guys think. Do you think I should be main decking um, Crimson Blader right now? I feel like it's really good against the Shadow matchup, so I'm thinking I might put it back in. Uh, for sevens, I'm running just two Beret. Um, I see a lot of builds online running three. I've never had a game where I've actually made three. If I'm at the point where I'm making three berets, I'm probably losing because my hand's really awkward. Um, the guy you make the most is Beretto. Uh I wouldn't mind making room for a third beret. Like, I originally was running three of these, but I just felt like um, I actually cut one out and I ended up running uh, a Landoice instead. Just because you get dead spe spells in your hand sometimes. And this card single-handedly just makes the Shadow matchup, like, really easy. Uh, it makes a lot of matchups really easy as well. It's just a really good card, so I feel like he's necessary. And then the one Black Rose. Uh, for fives, I run no sixes. 
Um, I don't run Barkeon. Like the only way you can make Barkeon is with a uh, level four watchdog and in a Shiji, and that's like never gonna happen. So, um, so Catastro is just there mainly for synchro climb. If you have a really weird hand, like say you open uh, Inishichi, Nanishi, and uh, like an emergency teleport, I can still make a Bredo with that, and I can actually go plus, which is nice. Because um, Inishichi is just basically going to search me out in Anatomy, and then I got some Synchro plays with Burrito, and I can kind of keep going and draw cards and stuff. So, um, But other than that, like, his effect is good too. It's, it's relevant. Uh, it gets over um, Bougins uh, if you if they don't have the um, hair in the graveyard. So, <clears throat> um, And then Nichiria Beast is like MVP. You get Nichiria Beast with a Decree set, you're pretty much just like, it's blowout, it's game. Um, and then for the last two cards, we just have um, two of the uh, Roid Cycle, Pear Cyroid, I totally got that name wrong, Pear Cycroid. That's a stupid name, actually. I don't know why they call it that. Um, the reason you might be asking like why you only run two uh, instant fusion targets is because most games you're never going to need to use three. Um, but some games you definitely use two, so I don't think you'll need the third. If you do get a dead, like you might be thinking, okay, so I have like three... Um, are two different cards in the deck that I'm running three of that I only have two targets for. Uh, they can just the dead spells can get pitched with Landois um, and just you know easy wins like that. So, anyways, guys, that's the deck profile. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely comment down below if you guys think I should be main decking Crimson Blader, uh, cut up to Scrap Dragon. I'm actually thinking I probably should um, now that I think about it more. Um, I really I haven't really made Scrap. I think he's the only guy actually in my entire extra deck I haven't made yet. So, uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Peace.